Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to be working on product of array except for itself. And in the problem, you're given an integer array nums and you want to turn an array such that the answer i is equal to the product of all the elements in i except for nums i. And it's guaranteed to fit into a 32-bit integer and you want to array it in o of n time without using divide. So in this first example, everything except for 1 is 24, everything except for 2 is 12, everything except for 3 is 8, 4 is 6. And for this one, um, every, for the answer for everything except for zero is going to be zero because for every number, you would multiply the rest of them times zero, so you get zero. And then for zero, it is this part times this part, so it's negative nine times negative one, which is nine. So basically what you need to do for this problem, um, so notice it needs to be linear time. Let's just like figure out kind of some kind of recursive relationship or some kind of like pattern that like, like for one, for example, we can't use divide. So, so obviously a brute force would be like, okay, we're on one, let's just multiply every other number. Well, let's see what that would look like. So the numbers we need to multiply for one are these, right? Then for two, we would have to multiply, let's just write these in a couple of different colors. This times these. Then for three, you have to multiply this times this. Then for four, this times this. And then finally for five, it's gonna be these numbers. So you can see like, you can see a pattern. The number we're missing is like right in the middle and then the left grows one by one number at a time. So for example, for one, there is no left. For two, there's just a one. For three, there's um, one, two. For four, there's one, two, three. For five, there's one, two, three, four. So you can see like for every one of these numbers that we're trying to get a product for, the left side is just the previous left, the, the previous left result times one more number. And the right side is the previous right result, depending on which way you go, divide, uh, g getting rid of one more number, right? But we can't divide. But what we could do is we could get the right total for every number, right? Like the right, um, not the right total, but like the right side of every number, like every and every number multiplied for that number for the right side. And then the same thing for the left side, and then we can just multiply it by itself. Or not by itself, but multiply one by the other. So what I mean is like for, let's just kind of walk through how we could kind of do this. So let's um, let's draw this. So first, let's try to get all the right totals for every number. And that part is pretty straightforward. So if this is our numbers, and what I mean by the right totals is like the, um, for every number, let's get the, the product of everything to its right. So here, basically we can just keep track of an integer or something like we'll just keep track of an integer and we'll make it one to start. So all we have to do is for every number, we have to take the product to of the, of the number after it times the number or the number after it. So let's kind of walk through how this would work. So for this number, we don't even, we don't even actually need this. So for the last number in the array, the product to the right is always gonna be one because there's nothing here. So as a default, like a product you wanna to set to one and if you're doing a sum, you'd set it to zero. So the product to the right of this number is one. Now what's the product to the right of this number? Well, it's the product to the right of this guy times this guy, right? Like the product to the right of five is over here. The product to the right of four is the same as five, just you add the five. So here it would be five. Then for this guy, the product to the right of this guy is the same as the product to the right of this guy times this number. So it's gonna be five times four, so 20. And then for this number, it's gonna be the same as this number over here times this number, so 60. And finally, 120. And now if we take a look, this makes sense, right? So for one, the product to the right is all of these, which is 120. Then for two, it's the same minus one number, which is 60. And then we have 20, and then we have five. And we can't do it this way because we can't divide. Like to get the product of the right side, we have to go right to left because we can't do a division. So because we can't do a division, we just figure out, okay, which way does the product grow? And we'll go that way. Then we can do this exact same thing for the left side. So we can make another array for the left side of everything and literally do the exact same thing. So when we do the left side, um, uh, for one, there's nothing to the left. So we'll just default it to one. Then for two, it's gonna be the same as it is for one times one itself. So that's gonna be um, one. Then for three, it's gonna be the same as it is for two times two itself, so two. Then for four, it's gonna be the same as it is for three 
times three, so six. I think I maybe screw this up. I actually I know I don't think I did. And then for five, it's gonna be the same as it is for four times four, it's also twenty-four. I think that is correct, I think, right? Because for five it's one, two, three, four. So we have um yeah, so this is fine. So it's twelve, twenty-four. Then basically all we have to do now is for every number we have the product to its right over here. So we can make this, we can call this like right or something, right product, product. And we also have the left product. So then we can finally just make like one more result array. And then our result array is gonna be for every number the left product times the right. So it's gonna be this number times this number. Um, and which is pretty straightforward. So we can copy this, I guess. And this is going to be the result now. So we just take the left product times the right product. It doesn't matter in which order, right? Because it's A times B the same as B times A. So 120 times one, which is 120. 60 times one, which is 60. 20 times two, 40. 30, 24. And let's just make sure we did it correct. So for one, there is no left. So it's just gonna be one. It's right is over here, which is 120. For two, it's just gonna be one times um, 60. Uh, yes. And then for three, it's gonna be two times 20. So it's correct as well. Um, for three, it's going to be this times this. I believe that I just did that actually. Okay, so this is 40. And then for four, there's gonna be this times this. So six times five, 30. And then for five, it's only a left and then nothing on the right. So the right, we just default to one, which is just six. Or sorry, not six, 24. Yeah, so this is correct. And this is what we'd be returning. So now we can figure out how we could simplify this. So like here, we made one array, two array, and our result array. So we can actually um, do this section in place and just override this. And let's go and see what that looks like. And you can either do the right and then the left or like whichever format you want, but essentially, so we can calculate this right. And this is how you would do it in O1 because they're saying the result array doesn't count as extra space. So over here, we have our right product. Now we can basically calculate our left product on the fly and our result on the fly. So if we go left, our left product, we can actually calculate in one variable. Like we can just store it, right? So for example, we can just say our left product, let's call that P, we'll make it equal to one. And then we'll start over here. And then we can just multiply for every number. It's gonna be whatever our old product was times the number to the left. So for two, the left product is one. And then let's just write it above all these. For two, the left product is one, right? The old product times number over here. Then for three, it's gonna be the same one times two, so two. Then for four, or actually, I screwed that up a little bit. So this is one, this is one. And then for three, the the left product is going to be one times two, so two. Then for four, it's gonna be the old left product times three, so six, and then 24. So we can calculate this left product on the fly. And as we're calculating the left product, remember, the result for the every number result equals the left product times the right product. So we have the right product in here. So we can calculate the left product on the fly and then multiply it by this number and that will give us our result. So let's see what that would look like. Um, so we can walk through that one. So essentially we can start over here. Like this number is gonna stay the same because uh, the right product for the first number is gonna be over here and there is no left product, right? Like it's empty. So we can start the second number and we can make our initial product equal to one. This is gonna be our left product. So we can maybe even just call it left product. So left product and we'll make it one. So over here, the left product is gonna be the old left product times the number over here, right? Because if you think about it, the left product for one is over here, the left product for two, we're just adding, and we can even show this. The left product for two is the same as the left product for one plus this one number here. So we're just adding this number, so it's gonna be one times one, which is one. And then we multiply this left product times whatever we had here, because this was the right product. So one times 60, so that stays the same. Now we move over here. So the left product for this number is gonna be the same as the left product for the one before, which is this product over here, times this number. So we're basically adding this number to it now. So it's gonna be one times two, which is two. And now for this number, the result is gonna be the right product times the left product. Again, it's always gonna be the same thing. So 20 times two, which is 40. And then for the next number, 
it's going to be the same left product as before times the number we're adding now to left product is this one over here. And so it's going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be 6. Then it's going to be, this is the right product times 6, so we have 30. And then um, for the last number, we are adding it's going to be the same, the left product is going to be the same as it was for five. The left product is the same as for four, right? This is the one for four. For five, it's the same as it is for four, but we're adding the four. So we need to take six times four. So six times four, 24. And then we multiply it by the right product. So 24 times one, which is 24. And that should be our answer. So we should have one 20, 60, 40, um, 30, 24. And yeah, so we can code up this, um, we can code up this like O of one solution. Essentially, we're going to get the right product, store it in the result. And then as we go left to fill out the actual answer, we're going to calculate the left on the fly and just multiply the left by whatever is in the array already to get the result in O of one. So this is like our result array that we're just reusing. So let's do that. So we're going to have a result array. We can just make every value equal to um, one to start. So one times length nums. Um, do we want to make every value equal to? Yeah, because we want the right product. Yeah, that's fine. So we're going to make everything one at the start. So we'll say that the default right product of everything is one. Then remember, we don't need to start at this number because the right product for the last number is one because there's nothing here. So we need to start at this number over here when we do the right product. So we can say for i in range, length nums. We don't need the last one. We need the second to last. And we need to go backwards. So we need to say result i equals result i plus one right so like the right product for a number is the right product for the number after it times the number after it because that's the one we're adding so it's going to be result i plus one times nums i plus one there now we have the right product now we can even print it if we want to so we can print result and just return like an empty array just to see if we have the right thing so let's see so for one, two, three, four, we have 24, 12, four, one, which is remember um, what we actually had when we did the right product here. So that's fine. We can even use our test case. Uh, we can use this test case here, this one, two, three, four, five. And so, um, yeah, so that should be correct because for one, this is 120. Okay, so let's keep going. So now that we have a right product, now we're just gonna calculate the left on the fly and return. So we'll have our left product, we'll set that equal to one at first. And remember when we're doing this left, we don't need to start the first number because there is no left product here, it's just one. We can start the number over here. So for this number, um, its product is only the right product because there's nothing else, right? Like for this number, it's only the right product over here, nothing over here. So we can start this number over here. So we can go left to right now. So for i in range one to length nums, um, we are going to calculate our left product, which is just the old left product times the number before this number. So like if we're on this number, the left product is nothing. If we're on the two, the left product is the previous one times the number before it. So we need to say the left product is the left product times the number before this number. So nums i minus one. And now we have a left and the right is already in our result. So now we just change the result. So we'll say result i equals result i, or I guess we can just do this result i has the right product and we need to multiply it by the left product uh left and now we can return result so let's see if that's correct and that is indeed correct and if we look at our answer we have 120 60 40 30 24 120 60 40 30 24 so small optimizations to make this an o of one if you've never seen it before you can just make an array for the left an array for the right i think it's a lot more straightforward but it's basically like the same kind of problem as like for every number, right? Like the greatest integer to the right or like the sum of all the integers to the right or so on. Like it's basically the same for every number. You just keep adding the number. Um, you just keep adding one one number at a time. So this is basically, we did a right pass and we did a left pass. So this is O of N and space is O of one. You can also like probably override um, the input or something, but this works as well. 
because we're just reusing our result array over and over. And then we can recognize, we can calculate. We can't calculate both of them on the fly because to, to get the right, you have to be going right to left. To get the left, you have to be going left to right. So you just calculate one on the fly, or not one on the fly, you calculate one store in the array, then calculate the other one on the fly and um, modify the result. So you could do this the other way where you could go, if you want some practice, you could get the left product first and then you can get the right product on the fly and then get the result as well. That would also work. Um, but yeah, that's going to be all for this one. So if you did like this one, then please like the video and please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.